You ready to record even though April's, April's making a, yeah. disgusting lapping sounds in the background? <laughs> we switched her to like a wet food, a freeze dry food, and she loves it. But yeah. It's real gross. <laughs> it's real gross. It sounds worse than just a dog drinking water. <laughs> and this is how the podcast opens. Because <laughs> I've been housing all this doubt. An insecurity and I've been locked inside that house All the while you hold the key and I've been dying to get out That might be the death of me and even though there's no way of knowing where to go I promise I'm going because Hello everyone and welcome to Sadie Hawkins Pod Hello April, st- we didn't wait, She's still April's going. still eating <laughs> Oh, she's like, you talking about me? Aww <laughs> She's like, oh, oh, it's time. I got to go to my post, my, my engineer <laughs> She's like, post. oh, you guys started? You started? <laughs> oh, I'll get on the board. <laughs> so welcome back. Welcome to part two of Be My Escape. <laughs> <laughs> Did you forget? <laughs> no. Um, I'm trying to think of all the things we got to catch up on. There's so many voicemails. We have even more voicemails <laughs> than any previous time. <laughs> Like, I keep, like, thinking, like, oh, we'll catch up. Let's see. Well, first thing, we got a text message to the Sadie Hawkins pod voicemail, which, again, you know, is 402-95-SADIE. I guess we can receive voicemails. You mean text? Yes. (laughs) I guess we can receive texts. And uh, this one, there's no name, but it says, Wells Fargo abuse complaint was received (laughs) against your Wells Fargo account. For more details, go to wheelsfergo-banking.com. Sounds legit. We better click into that. We don't even have a Wells Fargo account. (laughs) Oh, and this was sent to uh, 14 other people at the same time. Oh, nice. I guess I think we're we're lumped in with all of those people who had (laughs) abuse complaints with their Wells Fargo accounts. They must have mixed us up with someone else. Delete. So, yeah, we have a ton of voicemails. Uh, as I've been saying, like, for the last several weeks, I'm waiting for the page to refresh. And we just keep getting more and more. So let's see what Brady has to say. Howdy, Learys. This is your corporate overlord, Brady. Uh, fun fact on the note, everyone getting Dev Awards. Mark Hoppus has a Dev Award. Not nominated has a Dev Award that he earned uh, with the song he was featured on by MXPX in the Passion of the Christ uh, album. So you are very correct. Everyone, even Mark Hoffis, has a Dev Award. All right. Bye. So, yeah, the last <laughs> couple of weeks, I've been ragging on the fact that, like, <laughs> it doesn't seem like a big accomplishment to get a Dove Award. It seems like they're oh, angling it's, to... It's still an it's accomplishment. It's still an accomplishment if you yourself get the Dove Award. But so many people have Dove Awards. Yes, here you go. Mark Hoppus for The Empire, the song that Mark Hoppus performs along with MXPX on the Passion of the Christ soundtrack. Not the actual soundtrack to the movie. Right. But like the songs inspired How by Cash How great would Rabin. it be, though, if there actually was an MXPX song just in the middle? I'm sure we could go and find an FMV of oh, that no. song cut to Oof. images from the movie. Uh, Brady called back to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the voicemail he was really looking oh, forward no. to sending. <laughs> what was that reaction? You'll see. Oh, wait. Before I play Brady's second <laughs> portion of the email. In the Google Translate or the Google transcription of his voicemail, a couple of fun things. Dev Award was transcribed as Deborah Ward. Nice. And the devil. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I thought at first when he started talking that he was saying devil horns. So I understand. I got you, Google. That uh, Northwestern accent. Okay, so Brady actually called up. He's like, I forgot because it was weeks ago. Brady was like, oh, you should actually play the second attempt I did at the voicemail. So we heard the first one. So here's his second 
specific attempt where he, he Sh- decided Should we to... retake this or we're just going to play both because we definitely don't have a lot to cover no, today? No, we have a lot to cover, but no, we're going to play the first one and we're going to play this one where he fixed up the voicemail. He spiced it up a little. Hi, Learys. This is your corporate overlord, Brady. On the note of everyone having a dev award, Mark Hoppus, famously known as the bassist for Blink-182 and known for such insightful lyrics as Shit, piss, f***, fucker, motherfucker, tits, fart, turd, and f***, mom, won a Dev Award for his work on the song The Empire with MXPX. So you're right, everybody has a Dev Award. And that time it said everyone has a devil ward. <laughs> devil ward. So yes, I mean, that's... that's like... The Empire. Why does that... Isn't that like an Angels and Airwaves thing? It is. Okay. I Empire. Well, I think in both cases, it's a pop rock, pop punk adjacent band doing a Star Wars analogy for like religion. Did I shock you that I knew that? A little bit. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure the I Empire imagery in that Angels and Airwaves album is like meant to evoke some sort of spiritual, religious type thing. I've never dug into it. Gotcha. But in the case of the Empire, the MXPX song, I don't actually think it might have necessarily actually been a religious song at all. I think in the case of, I don't think it's really known exactly why that song's on there or if there's someone out there. Who knows how the so song's they inspired? Didn't, they did not do this for this. this well, that's the, this is what I'm asking. This is, this is this is what I'm asking. Is I don't know like why that album exists. Like obviously it was a cash grab because it's just a bunch of pop artists, either Christian or Christian adjacent pop. Right, artists. music inspired by and music inspired by albums like containing music that absolutely had just had flat out nothing to do with the thing. Like right. anyway. Songs from and inspired by Passion of the Christ. I don't know if anyone out there knows the specific story, but I'm guessing it was just a cash grab and maybe only a couple songs were specifically recorded specifically to be on that album. And in a case like MXPX and the Empire and with Mark Hoppus, like I have a feeling like maybe that was just a song that was made and kind of wasn't didn't fit on anything else because they also did Wrecking Hotel Rooms around the same time, maybe a year or two off. But like, I would assume that maybe, like, someone just had this in a drawer and was like, oh, MXPX. Oh, Empire. It's about Star Wars. It's about Star Wars and the Roman Empire or something. There's no way it was specifically written with Passion of the Christ in mind. It, it was a cash grab thing, and I think they found that MXPX Mark Hoppus song in a drawer. This is my theory, but... Yeah, that's like how they did that with Wrecking Hotel Rooms for Shrek. <laughs> exactly. That's such a specific inside reference. <laughs> There's an MXPX meme I made with Wrecking Hotel Rooms and Trek. Anyway, so thanks very much to Brady for constantly calling us. And then he's got like all these corrections. He's got two more. Uh, corrections to us or to his own voicemail? The largest pickup truck for consumers with the two wheels on each axle is called a dually. So he just called us up to say that the largest pickup truck, it wasn't a pickup truck. It was like a box truck. The, it unless, was like a moving van. It was like a truck, moving van, or type like of truck. the kind that goes, you know, the kind of like trucks that go down the road that the guys live in. Maybe it was like a cargo truck. Long haul truck in. It was a huge cargo yeah. truck. It was actually a picture cargo truck. Cargo uh, truck. There this you is go. from last week. We did, if anyone, if you're listening to part two of Be My Escape, well, good because this is more my episode. It's all of our covers and stuff. So that's why you skip right to part two. But last week I talked about driving this giant vehicle for a movie and I hated it. And it wasn't a pickup truck. It was like a box truck, like a cargo truck. It's what you film moving stuff into. I don't know. I don't know. He's our corporate overlord. How can we disagree with Brady? And hit Brady's last voicemail here. So according to Wikipedia, Stephanie Meyer was born in Hartford, Connecticut and graduated BYU. So she's definitely Mormon. And uh, I Miss You by Blink-182 is definitely an Edward song. All right, guys. So yes, that makes sense because we found <laughs> Stephanie Meyer's playlist for New Moon last week and it did not say what character the song Miss You. Well, that was on the alternate playlist. Yeah, whatever. Thanks very much to Brady. What else have we got? 
uh, David Park called a bunch, and we still got all these other voicemails, but they're not specific to Be My Escape. So no. let's cut. Let's get through these David Park ones as well, because I think they're specifically about Be My Escape. Okay. Hello, Danny and Jess. It's David from Jimmy Eat Pod. Uh, I was calling just because I wanted to weigh in. As you know, I've never really been a Reliant K fan, uh, only in that they just were never on my radar, save for, quote unquote, that one song. And I think when Danny and I first spoke about Reliant K, and I was like, oh, yeah, I think I know that one song. And I almost feel like you probably figured that one song was who I am. Uh, but it wasn't because I didn't know that song. I'd never even heard that song. It was uh, Be My Escape, which was, like you said on the pod, I'm listening live, uh, way, way higher up in the zeitgeist. If I had ever heard who I am, I definitely didn't know it was them, and I never equated it with them. And then regarding, uh, oh, like, you know, Danny was saying, uh, who I am could have been written by any pop punk band and, and be my escape was very reliant K-ish. Uh, to me, coming in from an outsider's perspective, what's nice is be my escape while played a lot for me, um, never got played out and then discovering who I am through the pod, uh, and realizing what a great track it is. It very much is like, oh, these are two songs from this band, and I don't – it's just an interesting perspective. I don't consider them to be anything but two songs from this band that I really like a lot. Um, so, anyway, that's my take on it. Uh, and Who I Am absolutely slaps, and uh, I'm going to go back and listen to the difference between the mixes on Be My Escape. Okay, bye. Oh, good. I'm, hopefully that's – David Park has a second voicemail, so I hope he's going to say – if the radio mix is clearly different other than the edits, because yeah. no one ever gave us a response to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just because I've listened to so much Reliant K and I'm just like, you know, these are the most overplayed songs overall. If you're a Reliant K fan, like I just have developed certain ticks in my brain and the way I hear them. So it makes sense from sort of like a casual fan perspective to think that they both sound entirely like Reliant K, whereas like mm-hmm. I'm being like overly critical or overly it's they over processed in my brain. Like I've mm-hmm. thought about them and heard about them too much. So I can't really differentiate what makes one Reliant K more than the other. Cause we totally are opposite you and me between be my escape and who I am. I'm over I'm over with <laughs> who I am and you're over with be my escape. So let's go back to David's second half. Hey, it's David from Jimmy Pod again. You know, so instead of continuing with the pod, I went to listen to Be My Escape, and I realized, you know that intro, maybe Danny can back me up on this, um, kind of sounds like Alkaline Trio. Like, listen to the way the bass line kind of, like, creeps up in, like, a creepy way. Uh, and I don't know, it's, everything about the intro kind of sounds, until, obviously, the piano and Matt start singing, but it, they do sound like two different songs. The intro is very, like, hard-rocking, and then all of a sudden you get Andrew McMahon coming in with the piano and the... Uh, I'm just speaking in colloquialisms now. But anyway, it's like it's like <laughs> you're listening to Alkaline Trio, and then you're like, I don't know if I need to hear Matt Skeever right now, and you change the station, then they're playing Andrew McMahon on the next station. And that's, that's Be My Escape. Thank you very much, Mike. So he didn't actually have a comment. <laughs> that's funny. He didn't have an actual comment on the radio mix. No one had a comment for me on the radio mix, but um, I don't know. Let's hear it one more time. We're going to start talking about it now. Uh Refresh us, remind us. Yeah, I get that because that 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 particular (laughs) drumming (laughs) strumming pattern is a very alkaline trio type of Mm. strumming pattern. A lot of their songs start with that thing. Whenever I listen to Alkaline Trio, I always think I don't remember what song it is right now, but there's one uh, song on one of their Asian Man Records albums that's on like a VHS collection of Asian Man Record music videos and it's like them just standing in a backyard and Matt Skiba has his from what I remember he has his guitar up so high and he's almost strumming it like a ukulele Mm. and so I always think of Alkaline Trio's strumming as like ukulele-esque even though it's guitar so that kind of that is kind of what you're hearing a little bit here with the beginning of Be My Escape. Yeah, I can definitely hear a Matt Skiba esque thing in there. So we're we're talking about we have still have a ton more voicemails, but we'll get to them next week. 
We are talking yet again about Be My Escape. We're getting yep. into the deep dive, and we've got covers, and we never played nearly... You know, we didn't even play the Leno stuff last week or anything we talked about, so we'll play that all in a little bit. But first, to Jessica in our SHP newsroom with a special <laughs> report on the Be My Escape deep dive. So over on Genius, we have... Our first annotation in verse one, this one last bullet you mentioned is my one last shot at redemption. The gun imagery in this line found through the words bullet and shot contributes to the song's die to self theme. In this way, the last bullet is the singer's personal suicide. This motif draws heavily from Bible passages such as Matthew 16, 25, Luke 9, 24, and Galatians uh, two twenty to make us look them up. They don't quote them. This well, you can click into them. Oh, okay. This can also be seen plainly in the next line, because I know to live you must give your life away. Here, the singer resolves to move forward and out of the apathetic state he was living in. And then there's just a picture of a gun. Like, oh my god! <laughs> it's horrifying. This is on genius. Yeah, this is on yeah. genius. I That's, didn't even know you could put a picture in oh, yeah, the, you your can, comment. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, you can put pictures on. It doesn't come up a lot, but it comes up once in a while. Uh, you know, the <laughs> the place where I saw that recently was, I was like, uh, in Screaming Infidelities, I was always like, I always kind of assumed that when he's talking about the bottle of Beast, that it was like a, 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 gen, a, a, a generality of alcohol is the beast or whatever. Mm. It was just like sort of a poetic flourish of this bottle of alcohol, but instead of that he says the beast. But I was like, wait, maybe there's a specific whiskey or tequila that's called beast. Well, then I look it up and they're like someone on Genius on Screaming Infidelities is like, well, beast is the name of this beer. There's this beer called Beast. So that's obviously what he's talking about. I'm like, that doesn't make it. And then they show a picture of this specific brand of beer called Beast. And I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Because if he's so upset about the fact that she's been sleeping around on him or whatever, why would he be drinking beer? Like, that's barely anything to drown your sorrows in, much less like some beer that nobody's heard of. Anyway, that's the first time I saw pictures on Genius. Did you want me to click into these? Because I just clicked into the Matthew sixteen twenty five, mm-hmm. and it takes just me to like a whole, a whole bunch of pop ups and Ugh. stuff. And it's, I thought it would take you to like a Bible more website. annotations. No, no, let's not worry it about that. It just takes me to the Genius site for it. So it says, okay, it does give me it though. Wait, there's a Genius page specifically for this Bible verse. Yeah, for apparently, because this is what genius have. Does genius go through the Bible? (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) I mean, I I guess guess so. It would make sense if they went through the Psalms. Yeah, look, look, here we go. Uh, Matthew sixteen lyrics. Wow. And then it goes through. There's individual pages on genius for all the different chapters of the Bible. Yeah. That is, and some of them have annotations and some of them don't. So this one had a bunch of pop ups because Matthew sixteen twenty five has a bunch of pop ups. So, but like that's not. But the the Bible is in lyrics. <laughs> well, that's like Goodreads. Goodreads pops up in my deep dive sometimes because. Uh, yeah. They'll quote Be My Escape and then attribute it to other Reliant K songs. But I'm like, this is a song. This isn't a book. Well, I think there's a there's a, there's a a facet of the social side of Goodreads where you can basically like compile your favorite quotes. So I think that those mm-hmm. are just like individual Goodreads users typing in their favorite quotes. But to actually like annotate the Bible on Genius, it's not a song. It's not an album. I mean, I guess technically like audio like books on tape but what about the song of solomon danny well, that's what the joke i had halfway out of my mouth i didn't finish it the psalms and the song of solomon are probably the only ones that should technically be on genius so matthew sixteen twenty five: for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it this makes sense i mean i was a little iffy on that genius annotation uh, at first when they're like this is like a, a thing to suicide but I mean I guess it makes sense like that's the idea in some ways of the concept of being born again like you're being born again uh, I mean I guess I, I don't know specifically I've never been taught in a church I've been 
that being born again means you're previous self died i guess i've heard that but not strongly i've never been strongly taught that this but it's just the exact same thing sorry i read ahead because you had to i this one's on Aunt luke nine twenty four is not annotated so i had to like search down the page for it it says for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it it's the same thing just different wording well that's kind of how the gospels work don't they they have some of the same stuff between them and different different you are telling me this whole time that i've only ever really read the children's geared bibles that that if they try yeah they just repeat the same thing over and over again like a standardized test where they say it a bunch of different ways to try and confuse you well each of the gospels is written by a different person so they're right, all I thought telling they had di- different stories they have different sections and different stories but it's, some of them tell the same thing yeah because they were all there and it's like basically like like people saying like well no i remember that so it's like the a demon quentin tarantino into movie into or something and, like we've got to watch yeah, it from, the it's same like Rashomon. thing from other points yeah, of view. Well, this, the gospels are like rashomon it's like oh. i remember that the that legion got sent into a pig and then the other one's like no it was a bunch of pigs like, there's all kinds of stuff like that in the Bible. Well, you learn something new every day. I remember I heard an interview with Paul McCartney where he was talking about the day that the Beatles met Elvis and how, and Paul McCartney's, like, main point of this one interview was, like, we all have different memories. Like, they were all have different memories. Ringo remembers <laughs> we were sitting, but I remember we were standing. It's like, that's how, you know, that's, that's where the, that's where Rashomon comes in. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know those specific Bible verses by their uh, chapter and verse, so I wouldn't be able to tell you which is which. I don't know. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Right. So this makes sense. Now, last week we kind of settled on the this one last bullet you mentioned, my last shot of redemption, that there's a double poetic meaning there, that it can be interpreted both as bullet points like they're going through this list of grievances with his life but it can also be a bullet like a gun and this does put a certain uh context to the bullet as a gun version of that poetry that may, kind of makes sense i i think that's actually a pretty apt interpretation depending on whether or not you follow the exact theology um outside of Christianity or even within Christianity, the idea is that you're born again. So yeah, this kind of makes sense in its own way. Also last week I put out a poll and I asked, what do you think, who do you think the narrator of the song is speaking to in Be My Escape? And Twitter, I asked God, a person or both and like flat out run away. It was like God. I still think it's both. There's certain lyrics in here that I don't think you specifically say to God, specifically that ending, which I know a lot of people interpreted that as like the strongest theological moment in the song. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm still iffy on, I can't ask you to give what you already gave. It's like, well, no, you can't. The the, the proper sentiment would be. Oh, I was thinking about, because you know, to, to live, you must give your life away. Right. But the specific sentiment of, I can't ask you to give what you already gave. I'm still stuck on that as saying that to God, because you you would say, I want to thank you, God, for giving me what you gave. That's the way that I would see it. Like, I wouldn't look at Christ's sacrifice and his death and, like, his sacrifice for us as saying, oh, thanks, God, but I, I wish I could ask you to do that again, but I can't. I would say, thank you, God, for giving me, for, for dying on the cross for my sins. You know what I mean? Right. So that, that part is still a little sticky for me on the theology. I don't entirely understand. Uh, but, hey, the Bible in parts is on genius. I think that's the biggest revelation, no pun intended, <laughs> of this podcast so far. Next up in the pre-chorus, and I've been housing all this doubt and insecurity, and I've been locked inside this house all the while you hold the key. In the video, the band plays in a house that eventually has its four walls collapsed. Teeson right. has been imprisoned by the self-doubt he harbors, and only God can free him from that imprisonment. But in the video, all they show is pictures of the girlfriend all over the place. Well, sure, if you want to get that video on TRL, Dan. <laughs> they should show pictures of God in all the frames. Like, this is my Lord. Next up in verse two. 
I'm giving up on doing this alone now because I failed and I'm ready to be shown how. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Isaiah 55, 8. Deciding to become a follower of God. All of this is perfectly reasonable. Like, I don't, you know, we. I feel bad sometimes when we play down um, certain songs for possibly being, you know, Christian and and theological in their basis, but I can't fight it in this case. Sorry, uh, did Jessica sorry. See something? I can't, I, I don't want to fight it in this case because I do, because in my personal interpretation, it is both, but therefore like get d- digging deeper into like the specific theological references. I don't want to poo poo it as I have in past episodes. Yeah. Like As, especially because it's funny because you really push the double meaning in this one. And to me, this song has always been a very Christian song. Right. Um, and clearly to many others, as the very last annotation is the last lines, but so were you. So were you. And there's a picture of Jesus on the cross. <laughs> Ultimately, Christ died to save us, it says. Which they took to know, annotate that on, but so were you. So were you. I have to remember what the outro is. I fought you for... Okay, so first of all, this is the thing, is all of these websites do capitalize the you. And that is, as we said last week, just to reemphasize, that is not in the lyrics book. The word you, the pronouns are not capitalized, like, canonically. Well, because these are user submitted. These are user submitted, but that also sort of... And edited, probably, as well. So, you know, it could be that people go in and change the capitalization and others come along and change it as well. I just think it's odd that they chose to annotate, but so were you, so were you, with it about being about the crucifixion. But it's like... Was God... I mean, was Christ trying to save his own skin or did he know that he had to go and do what he needed to do? I tried to save my own skin, but so were you, so were you. And then it shows a picture, a a painting of Christ on the cross. But so were you trying to save your own skin? Like, like specifically, Christ didn't die on the cross for himself. Right. At all. He it did was for it us. for us only. Like, there was nothing selfish in, the, in Christ flat out as a figure is, is completely devoid of selfishness. Like, that's the point. Like, there are moments, of course, where he, he like, questions, why do I have to do this? But... <laughs> Like, There's other the, places the, the, the in this song where you could have put Cal- that. Yeah, the specific moment of Calvary, of being on the cross and dying, and to say God was try- Christ was trying to save his own skin by dying on the cross. I don't understand how that is the interpretation. Although I am given up, given up slowly to the fact that this is specifically about god but no kind of, you're given up on given up slowly i'm given up on given up slowly and i'm yeah. just accepting the fact see it changes the intention yes yeah there's just there's other places where you could have made that particular annotation it, it i would not have chosen that particular spot to put it right so we're gonna go over to song meanings now and i'm not gonna read all of them because there's, I can a imagine. Lot. There's 158 comments on here, so I'm just going to kind of skim that's through That's less here. than I would expect, though, to be honest. Like, I would expect somewhere in, like, at least the 500 um, uh, number of entries. I'm going to go as well, but I'm sure that these are pretty much going to be what we expect. So I'm going to go sort to oldest first, and you can be in whatever order you're in. Okay. Uh, oldest first isn't clickable anymore, so I guess I can't <laughs> oh, do wow. that. Well, this general comment came from Amish Man on April 15th, 2005, and said, this song is awesome. It's about giving your life to God and putting your trust in him. And then in all caps, it says, the video leads you to believe this is about a girl. It is not. And then they go on to, you know, quote the song as to why they believe that it's about the Lord and not a girl. The first one through the gate was um, Ashes or rise up stand tall i guess they signed this entry with the name ashes but their username is rise up stand tall on october 27 2004 oldest comment it says oh man i love it to me it's just about rejecting christ and then finally submitting to god's grace and accepting what christ has done for us no matter how much we turn away and yeah i mean Dan- this is danny speaking now i i get it i totally i i totally understand that 
Um, and then they say, RK has done it again. Uh, the replies are, love it, but I don't think that it's a song to God because in the video, there's a picture of a girl. <laughs> so says Jackie97. Then Jokers1776 says, I really, really don't think it's about a girl. The song was written before the video was made. Oh, was it? <laughs> because typically in the record industry, they make the video first. <laughs> And then they were like, well, the video's done. Let's try to figure out the best song that'll fit this video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was, these lyrics are centered towards a savior, a leader, and a deliverer. I mean, yes, I understand that that is easily an, interpret, an interpretation, but we went through it last week, and you can absolutely... There's, there's. I, to me, there's no specific lyric that absolutely 100% only says it's about God. It can, it's, it's both to me. Um, the chorus talks about being trapped. All the while you hold the key and I've been dying to get out and that might be the death of me. Right there. Okay, so stepping aside from Joker's comment here, there's nothing there that specifically says it's about a savior to me. It can be to almost anything. Um, this is a huge symbol for how we are trapped but God holds the key to freeing us. Danny again? Yes, you are correct. But it's also a symbol for anything else coming along <laughs> and holding the key. Um, I'm sorry I'm such a poo-poo uh, person when it comes to stuff. I just like to try to look at things from all angles. And... Uh, however, I think that the words, symbols, and themes point towards... God's grace, patience, and forgiveness to simply be a song, too much to simply be a song about a girl. Yes. Everybody's going to be, it's like, everybody's that's, either that, like, listen, this I is about that, a girl. Everybody's like, listen, this is about God. And all that, all these are song meanings, um, you know, genius, etc. Like all the comments on any of these are going to just be about having that argument over what it's about. And just, it can be about both. Why not both? It can be about both. But the thing is also last week I mentioned... There's nothing in this that says it can only be about God or a girl. It could be about a parent. It could be about a friend. It could be about um, what's something else people like liquor. It could be about drugs. Sure. No, I'm yeah. joking on that. Well, I mean, let's it see what the good folks over at TikTok think this song is about because <laughs> we have so many TikToks. And I don't. We I, have more TikToks than we do comments on song <laughs> meetings. So we're not going to get to all of them. But wow, is this what TikTok is? Because there's a lot of scantily clad ladies on here. That's true. And this one on the top right, that is the Ramona Flowers lady we talked about oh, so much. Right. That claims Reliant K is Mormon. We're not going to. We're not clicking into we're her. We're not going to click on her anymore. The, I have to click on this. I don't know if I can describe this. It is. Oh. There's a. A snake in an aquarium. On top of a dildo. On a dildo. A purple one. This is uploaded by Sex Positive Neck. And it says, she decided to be an escape artist this week. Yep. So... I guess I'm guessing they just go, they just search for words songs escape. with the word escape. <laughs> and, and they, I hope it was completely intentional. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this one says when you're stuck on the wrong side of tick TikTok. And then around him is different names of different kinds of TikTok subgenres of within TikTok emo TikTok. You've got him pulling up in like a. Taylor Swift TikTok and and then he drives himself away in a car like yeah he doubled himself sea, sea shanty TikTok no. cringy TikTok on funny talk so just, he's got to yeah. escape from all of the TikTok communities I escape what about from the, the TikTok gay? communities yeah. every day <laughs> what about Reliant Gay TikTok what about similar go. TikTok? Mental health TikTok and your local professional emo be my escape question mark? It's the exact oh same gosh, format of the previous talk, one. Oh my gosh, talk, unfunny talk, mean talk. We're all just was using this, the same thing. Maybe this was a specific uh, form of TikTok that people Oh my gosh, recently. is that what all these 198 videos are going to be? So they're all the form of... The oh, last, here, here's a, we've the got last a two we pet. saw were exactly the same form. It's a unicorn, like, chia pet, I think. 
<laughs> yeah, Chia Pet, and it's it's cute. They're spritzing it. Because the, the, the seeds are popping out and the chia seeds are escaping. So I get I, it. I want to make those, those previous two TikToks we watched where it's a person standing there and they're being surrounded by words that represent versions of TikTok they're afraid of. I want to make one of those, but it's all the versions of Reliant K online fandom that we're afraid of. It'll say like <laughs> reviews that say boys from Canton and yeah. <laughs> people... <laughs> People arguing about whether or not Marilyn Manson is evil. Well, turns out he is, but whether or not the existence of his music is inherently evil. What is this? This one's like inside of a toy star. Everything is still gone, though. What? And they're talking. So Mighty Casey 16 on TikTok posted this picture it looks like they're a target i can kind of tell from the from the shelving units mm-hmm. due to high demand these items what okay let's hear what he says all right guys i just want to give you a heads up my target is now doing three items total for sports and pokemon not three of each okay so having worked at target i can tell you the 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 baseball card section and when I say that, I mean, you know, that includes sports cards, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh! Right. It includes yeah. those, like, any sort of little collectible toy that, like, surprise box toys. Sure, yeah. Those are in the section up by the register. And those are actually, like, in the cataloging system of Target's, like, uh, stock. Those have their own separate like section in our in their our computers i don't work there anymore in their computers then then the rest of the store which includes the toy section gotcha right they're actually it's like periodicals any store that has periodicals or gift or um greeting cards you know that those are actually handled by outside vendors they come to clear out and restock greeting cards did you know that i did not know that almost any store other than i guess like a hallmark store specifically where that's where they sell that's what they sell a lot of those get a lot of greeting cards and always magazines are handled by outside companies that specifically come in and stock those things and take away the old stuff. Hmm. Like the actual employees don't do that. And at Target, when I worked there, I know that that's often how like alcohol works where it's like, there's different alcohol oh, yeah. vendors who come in and who are sometimes in the different like liquor stores and yeah. stuff to tell you about their specific product. Right. And at Home Depot, like certain expensive tools are only handled by the specific people mm. from that company. But my point is, sports cards, Pokemon cards, which is what this guy is complaining about, are stocked and handled by specific people. Like you can't just have right. anyone come in and handle the, that stuff. So I guess there must have been some sort of crazy run on <laughs> sports cards at Target, and they started limiting right, what you could get. Yeah, like spun, like special SpongeBob toys are on the shelf, and they're limiting what you can My get. My target is now doing three items total for. So, and uh, Mighty Casey sixteen wrote, "Doesn't really help anything when there are twelve people waiting for the restock." There you go. But like I said, the restock of that stuff. You, I already said it. Why do I repeat <laughs> stuff all the time? I'm sorry. It, you know, that's just me. This guy looks like a combination of Tom Wisniewski from MXPX with like Benji from, Benji Good, from Charlotte. Good Charlotte, hundred percent. He, but he's also wearing the sideways golf kind of cap. Yeah, and it says, "When your PO says wait here, I'll be right back." Your parole officer? <laughs> yeah. Hashtag probation. Hashtag jail. Hashtag addicted. Hashtag recovery. Hashtag meth addict. Hashtag funny. Hashtag true. Hashtag court. Hashtag SCA. Oh, scary. I'm drinking Maker's Mark tonight. So many TikToks. So many TikToks. I'm trying Are to find ones that aren't TikToks like... Are there TikToks where they're surrounded by words representing their TikTok anxieties? Well, I was trying to maybe avoid those. This person's just scrolling through. It's just a screen recorder. It says, where's their... my millennials at? Okay, they're scrolling through Spotify, and I'm guessing this is like the Emo Forever playlist or like the Pop Punk <laughs> Powerhouses playlist. It's good stuff. I have like all these songs. I had all those songs that she's scrolling through on CD. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Whoa. I'm sorry. I have to go back to song meanings for a second. I was about to close this tab. Kayla 
on November 10th, 2000, uh, 2004, said, Ooh, it sounds even better on CD than it did online. I saw that. <laughs> I liked Two Lefts better than Mm-hmm, but Mm-hmm is still awesome. That's so funny, especially in 2004, because yes, everything sounds better on CD <laughs> than it does online, even today. <laughs> Oh, so he's doing a cache? A geocache? Geocache. When Finding have... a newly restored geocache, it says. It's barely, he's, it's barely even playing in the background. Just kidding, I don't need to hunt because I literally walked straight up to it. It's right there in that little hole. I am going to use tweezers to get it out. I've never actually seen footage of geocaching, so you actually hide a physical item? There's our bison tube. Okay. Oh, wow. This probably might have taken me a little bit longer, but since the last time I was here and I couldn't find it, I basically found every possible hiding spot, but this time, this time we got it. <laughs> I got this we little got vial of cocaine. The next person to find. So I didn't, I've heard of geocaching. Oh, but I didn't okay. know you're actually. I thought geocaching was something more like uh, Pokemon Go. I thought it was all virtual. I thought you go yeah. to a location and and you get something by being there. I didn't know you actually find a physical object hidden in the location and then like open it up and remove it. I it mean, was he like, just well, he just looked at it and then put it back for the next person to find. So I guess there's some a geolocator in there that like you go on a treasure hunt to find or something. I guess. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Okay, this guy looks... Hold on. Pause, for goodness sake. Okay. I would like to say here that um, Phil the Fixer looks like if uh, if Remy Malik and Josiah Hughes <laughs> had a child. <laughs> and so it shows... It shows Phil the Fixer waking up from bed, uh, lip syncing the song immediately, and it says POV overthinking. Well, this isn't the Reliant case. Yeah, I was gonna to say, why didn't he pick uh... thinking overthinking? He's looking in the mirror when he says, I'm begging you to be my escape. So is he begging himself to be his escape? I like that. What if it's about looking inward and you're like, hey. I need you yeah. to be my escape. Self-assessment, just saying, I need you to be my escape. I need yeah. you to get right with yourself. Lots That's of ones beautiful. are like... Nobody, no, you know what? <laughs> Nobody had that interpretation. I think you're the first person to have that interpretation that be my escape could be about yourself. <laughs> Why not? Uh, this one is a lady contemplating and it says, I've been in this rut ever since Tony Stark died. So I'm guessing that they're playing the part of the song where they say... Been stuck oh, inside man. this ride. Oh, man. When we saw Endgame in the theater, someone behind us was very, very, very... I'm sure a lot of people were, but they... We just happened to, in our theater, sit behind and sit in front of the person in our theater who was the most torn up about Tony Stark dying. She was, like, sobbing. I cried. I wasn't, like, really loud about it, but I cried. All right. So I'm just looking through... I mean, there's so much more. A lot of it is just, like, when you were, like, an emo in middle school and stuff and... Uh, this one says, shut up and listen to Reliant K with me. There's a picture of Harry Styles in like a pilgrim hat behind her. Um, <laughs> oh, we got, we got whatever this is. Oh, it's a first, so- it's a drawing of some fursonas. This N- is. Nightmare was a follower of fire, but she joined the light side. Nightmare so, is the dark. Oh, it's. Is- it- Isabel underscore draw underscore wolf 303 drew some anthropomorphic wolves but just their bus which sounds dirty but you know just their chest and up <laughs> of nightmare and kara i have have I ever talked to you about how i have very specific thoughts on furries i thought that you were gonna say that have i ever talked to you about my persona and i was gonna be like no <laughs> no you have not i have a very specific thought on furries i once in a while make a furry positive meme through the various like meme themes of this MXPX or you know whatever ska or whatever this I this is my feeling on furries I'm not a furry but I think furries are honestly some of like probably the bravest subculture that exists out there because they're not afraid because 
here's the, the thing is like I'm familiar with the fact that I've only been like a, a casual anime fan at best but people like learn you like anime and they're like oh you get off on cartoons and I'm like you know there's the like, anime is literally a a form of art it's not like you say you someone says I like sculptures and they're like oh you get off on rock you get off on <laughs> rocks and stone and stuff <laughs> You get your rocks off on rocks. You know what I mean? So anime is not a genre. It's a medium. And not I all know statues that. are naked. Exactly. So not all anime is porn, but like like people in like the general zeitgeist will think like, oh, anime. Yeah, that's just Pokemon and porn. It's like, it's lit- It's a medium. It's not even a genre. There are genres contained within anime. So I understand that, right? And I also understand just from hearing it be talked about that just because you're a furry does not mean you are only into like furry porn and it doesn't mean you're only into like the idea of being an an anthropomorphic animal that has sex like you just you envision yourself as an anthropomorphic animal and if that's what you're into and it's not even necessarily about sexual sexuality to you that's amazing and furries are just themselves so good for them I can't believe you're coming out as a furry on our Reliant K podcast. Jessica, this is literally, what you just said is spitting directly in the face of the spirit in which what I said was, I am holding out a branch to the furry community and saying, I see you and I celebrate you. Okay? I am under, I am celebrating diversity and I'm looking at furries and I'm saying, that's not me. I'm not one of you. But I'm an ally. I understand. And I think that if the world would like sort of understand furries a little bit more, this would be a better place. Why are you giving me this look? I'm filled with I'm filled with understanding and kindness. Speaking of furries, do you remember bronies? Let well, just... apparently be my escape. Total oh, brony no, jam. Bronies. Because... Let me tell you what's wrong with them. <laughs> because it showed up on a brony playlist. <laughs> Let me just say, time. anyone who tweets at us, oh, Danny's a furry, you're a person that's filled with hate, okay? I know, I know Brady is just chomping at the bit to pick up his phone to tweet it. Leave us a voicemail right now. Brady, I know you're not a hateful person. If you tweet that tweet, it means you're filled with hate. Don't do it. So I'm going to hedge into your uh, your research a little bit here, Dan, because Uh-oh. we have a video of Andr- the lead singer Women of Jack's taking Mannequin Women taking my singing, job. <laughs> the lead singer of Jack's Mannequin singing oh, okay. lead on this song. Yes, I had found this. I it Oh, it was on the Twitter of Press. That's cool. Okay. It was big enough news on there. So this is cool because we talked about this last week, but... Um, All these stories about times where Tyson wasn't available to play or to sing, and there were guest stand-ins, like the times we've heard that John Foreman supposedly stood in to sing and lead for Reliant K, and no one recorded him and no one put him online. But at least we have this one Andrew McMahon one. So Andrew McMahon is not exactly a Matt Skiba type, but he <laughs> he's just certainly brought, not a Matt Tyson type. <laughs> but he brought the song like twenty percent closer to that alkaline trio thing that David was talking about. <laughs> That, like, wavy, pseudo um, Danzig thing. That, like, sort of, like, wavy rock and roll type thing. Right. He also carries that same sort of stage presence. Right. As well. Neat. And that was uh, Relaying K was joined on stage by Jack's Mannequins Andrew McMahon to perform Be My Escape. The performance was filmed at Australia's 2012 Soundwave Festival. Oh, good day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that? 
<laughs> oh Sorry, yeah, where's me, where's Dinny? Did, did Dinny go to the show? Did Dinny record the video? Could I? Yes, I was. I was there. It's me, Dinny. I was right there. I saw Andrew McMahon. Uh, you like Jack's mannequin, Dinny? <laughs> I like Jake's mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of totally stealing by, <laughs> speaking of totally stealing your spot dan we have reliant k on the tonight show yes the uh teased last week that we didn't actually get to so on youtube it's a really low res upload of them performing be my escape on the tonight show so you have to go to adobe i-d-o-b-i dot com to see like the full res version Alrighty, my next guest are headlining the Vans Warped Tour. They'll be in Vancouver tomorrow night. The latest CD is called Mmm. That's the latest CD. Please welcome. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> early in our podcast. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so early in our podcast, like in the first month or two, I saw this footage doing like my first ever one of my first ever YouTube deep dives. And I commented on this. I'm like, I watched the, I, I somewhere in some past episodes I talk about it. I'm like, Jay Leno is, <laughs> so I, some episode I talk about the fact that Jay Leno pronounced mm-hmm as, mm. Mm. <laughs> it's, that's the sound he, you know why? Because that's the sound he just goes around making all the time. He's like, mm-hmm. hey, Ryan K, is it not for me? Yeah, knucklehead. <laughs> oh, wait, that's, uh, that's curly. Oh, cool. Uh, Tyson's playing like a grand piano. That's cool. Nice. Yeah. Everybody's rocking out. They're sounding good. You know what? I just realized that that little sort of breakdown section that leads into the first lines of the song. Mm Mm-hmm when it's not the radio edit where they cut it out. It's yep, yet there's... another Reliant K, dun, 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 yep. dun. Put that on the <laughs> list of dun, dun, dun songs. It's not a full dun, dun, dun song, but it's partially. By giving up slowly, blending in so you won't even know me. Apart from this whole world that shares my fate. And this one last point you mentioned is my one last shot at redemption. Cause I know to live, you must give your life away. I love that Matt just did this little like hair flip thing, <laughs> but his hair didn't move at all. <laughs> <laughs> Two things I want to note. One, good, good on the Tonight Show director that they're giving Dave Douglas plenty of screen time, especially since he's singing vocals. You know, he does yeah. the vocals back there. Yeah. They're not just ignoring him. They're giving everyone... Well, they're not really giving John and John much no. specific time, but they're giving Dave a good amount of time. And in two... Probably because you've got... They were probably like, okay, these are the three main members of the band at that maybe, time, maybe? maybe? I don't know. Like With the, with the director of the Tonight Show, maybe they were a big fan. It's like, I don't know these two <laughs> new guys. Where's Brian? <laughs> ah, 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 I want a Brian K to come on. Ah, I thought Brian was going to be in the band. Who are these two new guys? Is that the guy from Ace Troubleshooter? What, is now Ace Troubleshooter broke up? <laughs> Uh, so then my second note is I realized that when, because we don't see it that much, but when t on TV, he has, and I don't know, this is, this can't be deliberate. It's probably just both in their personalities. He's got a very specific John Linnell from They Might Be Giants approach of being on TV where he always knows where the active camera is and he's <laughs> staring it down <laughs> because whenever They Might Be Giants are on TV, John Linnell, and it's funny because they're both like curly-ish haired blonde guys. Uh, 
they he'll always stare down whatever is the active camera and he knows how to turn and look he's like the one girl from fun fun not the other girl <laughs> right. from fun fun who's playing it up for the audience <laughs> <laughs> that the one girl in Fun Fun always knows which camera, right. the, 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 the babysitter one, yeah. she always knows which camera to look at. <laughs> Oh, he missed it there, though, Dan. He missed he missed that. He was too busy doing fuck me eyes to the uh, other camera. Okay. I thought maybe he had to look down at the piano. He's like, piano is hard. I got to look at all the keys. <laughs> so many buttons on this key on this piano. And this life sentence that I'm serving. I admit that I'm every bit deserving. The beauty of grace is that it makes life not fair. I just noticed the sunflower on top of the grand piano. Oh, it's like the album cover. <laughs> Go buy your copy of mm, <laughs> now in stores. Now at your local Sam Goody. Those are still open in 2004 ish. And let's see if uh, if uh, does does <laughs> does does Leno go up and be like, ah, come on over to the couch. Let's talk to you guys. You know that thing when like yes. the Johnny Carson thing. It's like if Johnny Carson brought the comedian over to the couch. Like their career would be made, yeah. but if Johnny Carson just went up to the comedian and said thank, and shook their hand and went to commercial, then it meant Johnny didn't think they were that funny. Let's see, let's see if the boys from Canton got brought up to the couch. I'm begging you to be my skin. Oh, guys, nice job, gentlemen. Ryan K, nice work, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, well, Adobe.com faded it out before <laughs> before we could find out. Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, that sound they sound way better there than they did playing uh, "Faking My Own Suicide." On was it "Faking My Own Suicide" or was it something right? It was "Must Have Done Something." Must right. have done something right. <laughs> as much as it took, as much as it took some of the some of the fandom a while to come around on the problems of "Faking My Own Suicide." wasn't a single i just realized yeah no not so much dan i was like why why would that be the the track <laughs> so you did you did parts of my job well i also did parts of your job oh i did some deep dive to help you out and i still have a few things that i didn't get to last week but there's an a uh, interview with what is this website called <laughs> oh so, the south florida insider I think we've been here before. Okay, reporting with an edge. I'm pretty sure we've been here before. And this was an interview with Matt Thiessen and John Warren uh, at the Pompano Beach Warp Tour. Nice. (laughs) First question, like all of these interviews ask, how's the tour going? (laughs) But uh, specifically about the song Be My Escape, the interviewer says, even with the success of earlier hits, do you think the song, a song like Be My Escape will be a song that launches your status? Uh, this interview is August 6th, 2005. And Thiessen replies, I don't know if we've really had any hit song, but there are certain songs that stand out a little more from the rest of the record. I think the only reason why Be My Escape might sort of launch our band into another level of anything is just because we put out a video for it. Also, our record label has been trying real hard to get the video played and stuff like that. I just think the exposure that we're getting for that song has by far increased our status in comparison to some of our other stuff. I just found that reply really interesting because Tyson is really playing it, not coy, he's playing it sort of subdued. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't know if this is a hit. He's like reluctant to say that this has been a hit or this has been that much bigger for them bef- than before. And I just found that interesting. And it also kind of goes back to some of the stuff I was saying last week about like, what if Capital, after moving up Reliant K from Goatee, had said, you know, don't worry about mm-hmm. 
you guys finished it. Let's let that keep going through the Christian circuit and all that and the youth groups and the Christian radio, but let's start working on your first mainstream album. Mm -hmm. But no, instead, in fact, Capitol looked at mm-hmm and they said, oh, there's songs on here we can actually start pushing now. Right. And But it's funny because mm-hmm was recorded in their youth group period, for, for lack of better term, right. their, their youth group era. And it was recorded with the intention, I assume, of being a Christian record for Christian bookstores and, you know, with the same kind of crossover appeal that Two Lefts had and the same crossover appeal that Anatomy had. It wasn't expected to be that much bigger of a mainstream album. It wasn't recorded for Capital. Right. So it's funny that still in August 2005, Tyson is still being sort of coy at the idea that this is their mainstream breakout. I found that interesting yeah. especially that lines up with my feelings of Reliant K and mm-hmm, suddenly being on the radio when I was you know going to see it going to see them play it shows with just like 150 people there yeah so we have a live journal post uh this is from Sable Vampia from Germany posted August 8th 2010 and it's titled these guys keep me sane song of the post be my escape Reliant K hey again smiley face I just felt I had to post this second post of the day because it is my reason to read for Frerard fan fiction. I know it is no news to all of you. MCR slash Frerad fans out there. Uh, spell that. Let me look up what that is. So this is fr- Frerad must be two maybe members of My Chemical Romance that they uh, ship. I would okay. imagine. Um, Can you spell it, though? I want to figure out. F-R-E-R-A-R-D. Ferrard. But this one time, I have to verbalize this realization for myself. Be prepared. It's kind of fluffy, winky smiley face. MCR, and especially Ferrard, by being so special and being so honest and sincere, have kept me sane on a lot of occasions during my life. What about Reliant K? And I am not that young anymore. Winky smiley face. I owe those guys a major part of my behavior and my attitude towards others. They are like my secret lifesavers. It is everything. If everything seems to be drama in my life, which sadly occurs very often, sometimes I have the feeling my life is just only drama. And always the most unpredictable dramatic situations come up. Perhaps that is the reason why I feel so strangely connected to those boys. I simply love them. They showed me that drama in your life doesn't mean you are forced to give up. I especially adore, here we go, Frank and Gerard. Ferrard. I had the answer sitting right here. Because I was waiting for a word. To, a, a <laughs> I didn't know why you asked anyway. me because I knew it was going to come up. And, and, we all get <laughs> to meet a lot of interesting people. So Gerard Way... And Frank Ario, or how you pronounce his last name, I could never tell you the names of the members of My Chemical Romance, or My Chem, as they're called, but they, if he was a multiple choice test, I would get them. I have seen these names before. Is Gerard Way the main one with the black hair? Yes. Okay. I Which one's Frank? That, Is I don't know be... what Frank oh, looks no, like. I know of this band because of over- Overheard Punk. I've, I've seen how Frank Eero has like uh, a newer band. But that doesn't mean just because someone overheard something crazy at we a all... Frank Eero concert. That doesn't mean I went and listened to him. <laughs> we all get to meet a lot of interesting people who are like we are on the inside. Ferrard is transformed in so many ways. Ferrard is transformed in so many different situations in my life, especially through great fan fictional stories written by those great people. It's always there to give us hope and tell uh, tells us never to let go of our dreams. That's nice. That is the reason why I love Gerard Way and Frank Eero. They made me dream like no one else could ever make me. And even at the age of 26, I think my life is maybe kind of interesting through all the stuff that happens to me. They did right the right thing up on that stage by making out, by kissing, by showing their love. Did that actually happen or did this happen in the fanfic? I think it might have happened because here's what I'm looking at. Urban Dictionary, the top definition is abysmal. All it says is, <laughs> definition, Farrard, just a gay ship originated from MCR. 
if you don't know what it means, that doesn't mean anything. No. Like, what if you need to... I figured that one out already. Then you need to clip gay ship, because you're like, gay ship? <laughs> like a like a tanker that like, ships around gay people? And you're like, MCR, what's that mean? And then it's, it says, Farard is very gay. Like, that doesn't answer anything. But the second definition says, the pairing of two members of the band My Chemical Romance, Gerard Way and Frank Eero, it was totally real. Don't deny it. And then... The que- it says, and as an example, it says, do you remember the Farrard kiss? So I'm guessing that these two in real life kissed. Gotcha. I know, like, that uh, Dave Grohl and, I actually don't remember which one, but Dave Grohl and one of the other members of Nirvana, like, tongue kissed at an MTV Movie Awards once. Like, oh, just wow. to, like, get a rise out of people. Sure. But, like, that somehow has not remained at all in the zeitgeist or huh. consciousness or whatever. But I just... Rem- I, I don't remember from the time because I didn't get into Nirvana until the year Kurt Cobain died. But, like, then that, that was still, like, a known thing that had happened. But it's been buried. So it's, like, sometimes straight guys who don't actually care do tongue kiss. It's... it's some people might not get it, but... It happens. Uh, they did the right thing up on that stage by making out, by kissing, by showing their love. And there is in all caps. And of course, by showing us their f***ed up lives and how they made it, which makes me proud to be a fan. They never cared what others thought. And that's not just about Farrard, but about this wonderful project called My Chemical Romance. It makes us dream. It is absolutely real. It is passionate. And through all of this, it will be forever. Bye, guys. I simply love you. Exo Sable. And then they give the lyrics to Be My Escape. <laughs> I mean, it sounds okay. It sounds like people really want Farrard to be real and they want Frank and Jared to actually be actually in love. But what if it's just the chemicals? <laughs> I don't know what. She looks so disappointed in me. What if it's not a real romance? What if it's just the chemicals? Jessica, look at me in the eyes. What if it's just the chemicals? She hates me right now. April, you want to be the new co-host of Sadie Hawkins Pod? This song is also <laughs> featured on a playlist on the Tumblr Star Wars Polyamory uh, for <laughs> Anakin, Padme, and That's Obi-Wan. A <laughs> That's a good segue. <laughs> uh, track list. One, I will follow you into the dark. Death Cab for Cutie. Two, Heroes, David so Bowie. this is people who want Anakin, Padme, and Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan. to be in a thruple. Yeah. It says, I woke this morning I woke up in a cold sweat with a need to make an Obi Annie Dalla playlist. So now y'all are stuck with this. Enjoy. So one, I'll fall I will follow you into the dark, Death Cab for Cutie. Two, Heroes, David Bowie. Three, I'll write your name across the stars. Wood ring music. Four, be my escape, Reliant K. Five, Zion Pillow Talk. Or Zane? What is this? Z A Y N. So I've never, I, uh, maybe I've seen that band name, but I don't really know. Zine, Zane. I think Pillow Talk's the band name. Okay. If it follows the same order as the rest of them, then yeah. Six, must have done something right, Reliant K. Seven, Team, Lord. Eight, Will Be a Dream, We the Kings featuring Demi Lovato. Nine, Somewhere Only We Know, Kanye. Ten, Do You Love Me Too, Tessa Violet featuring Rusty Clayton. Oh, for some reason, Pillow Talk and Zane were the only listing that was reversed. Z- Zane is the band or the artist, and Pillow Talk is the song. Here it is. Oh, is this like the One Direction guy? I don't know. Maybe? I don't know. He's like a. This is him. He's like a guy. Yeah, I think that's the One Direction guy. <laughs> We're so you, old. Well, I guess if you say so, because fans also like Harry Styles, Liam Payne, Sean Mendez. Yeah. Most of those were. Mm hmm. Were One Directioners. He's on the Aladdin soundtrack. The, the you know, the action, the new Aladdin soundtrack. But what does that have to do? Was Be My Escape even on there? <laughs> it was. It was num- track number four. Okay. So we also have a blog from 
ldpreload.com. It says, Be My Escape. My acapella group is singing Reliant K's Be My Escape this semester. In discussion at rehearsal after we received the music, it was pointed out that the words are about as fundamental to how cool the song is as the music, and the music is pretty amazing. But it's fairly intricate and rapid and hard to understand all the details. Here's my interpretation. I'm giving up on giving up slowly. I'm blending in so you won't even know me, apart from this whole world that shares my fate. The song has essentially one large conceit of which fate is going to be an important part. One thing to note here is that giving up slowly is keeping is keeping trying at least a little bit, or if nothing else, pretending to not have given up. If he's giving up on giving up slowly, he's giving up hard. Another is that the last two lines are a full sentence, so he's not apart from the world, but indistinguishable from it, and resigned to share his fate with them. But that's mostly straightforward. This one last bullet you mentioned is my one last shot at redemption, because I know to live you must give your life away. Suddenly, there are a lot more things going on, of which the first is the word play of shot. It's both his chance at redemption and firing the bullet for redemption or escape. He can kill himself and give his life away, but he then says he does that to live, which seems to be a contradiction. The statement, incidentally, sounds much like an oft-repeated quote from the Gospel, Matthew 10.39, Luke 9.24, and 17.33, etc., etc. Unless this is the exact same genius. Yeah. Seems to be a unanimous... Could be. Reliant K is a Christian band, and they are undoubtedly going for that reference. But more than that, there are parts near the end when you cannot be anything other than Christ. And I think there's no reason to agree. say that it's anyone else <laughs> It can else be here. anything other than Christ. It is clearly meant to evoke Christ, but to say it can't be anything else but Christ is simply not true. There are so many people that hear this song and don't interpret it as Christ. I'm just being inclusive of everyone's point of view. I now understand that, yes, this is largely about Christ. But it can absolutely 100% be interpreted as anything you want. There's no talking about, there's no mentioning of the cross. There's no mentioning of Jesus. There's no mentioning of dying for sins. Like, I'm not angry. There kind of is. I don't. I think it's counter to what the song was intended to be. Like, I, I, I think, yes, that that Thiessen and Reliant K would have written this song through the lens of Christianity. But I think it's clear they wrote it knowing that it was a song that could be taken by everybody and meant to be whatever it is. So when people are just like staunchly, this can only be about Christ. I don't I don't I don't think that's constructive in any way. I think that just closes doors for people. I've literally seen it close doors for people. I've literally seen tweets online where people are like, Be My Escape was my favorite song about mental health until I found out Reliant K is a Christian band. But literally until they found out Reliant K was a Christian band, there was nothing in the song that made them think they were a Christian band. And if someone who has no idea Reliant K is a Christian band listens to the song and doesn't understand that it's a Christian song, it means it's not just a Christian song. Right. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Good, good songs, Stop good poetry arguing. should have more than one meaning. Yes. I agree. And I definitely believe in like the, you know, in, in sort of the idea of death of the artist that, you know, you take what you want to from art, you know, you, you take what you want out of it. And if it means something to you, meaning one thing, that's amazing. And that's wonderful. And it's touched your life. And they made the art to touch your life. And so yeah, it's touched your life in whatever way. And I think that's great. And I think there's no good reason to say that it's anyone else here. So what is the bullet Christ mentions? <laughs> of course, it's not literal. And this resolves the contradiction. The bullet is the chance to end the old life, the one that makes the singer just part part of the rest of the world that shares his fate and to find spiritual rebirth stepping back in one more place 
this is quoted, John 12, we find this verse before it. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of what wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. I don't like this. Yeah. I don't like this point of view. I don't like this statement. Sorry, God. Don't don't love this Bible <laughs> quote. Who knows? Could have been changed throughout the years. I don't love the idea that you have to have a bad life on earth in order to have a good life in heaven or in the next life. I don't like that thought process. That creates a lot of extremism. That creates a mm-hmm. lot of black and white. And I don't like that. I agree completely. Like, that's not the Christ that I believe in like that's not that's not i believe we're on this earth to love each other and not to just not just to suffer not just to focus on the next life like this is the life we know god gave us now and this is the life we make the most of yeah like like i think the idea of the next life being a reward has been really wrongfully attributed to the idea of like don't worry about now like screw now just focus on what's going to happen after you die and like that's not the idea the idea is like work and work and feel good about what you've done and feel good about the love you've given out into the world and feel good about the 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 peace and the prosperity that you've helped give everyone around you and when you're done and you look back on your life you know you made this world a better place. Yeah, and, and, the, the, and there from are your other... vantage point of the afterlife, you can know you did great on Earth. Like, but sometimes certain sects of Christianity invert it, and they say, "Screw Earth, forget Earth. Earth is worthless. Earth is nothing. Nobody matters. Just worry about your salvation." And there are other songs by Reliant K that allude to that that I don't particularly care for, such as "Collapsible Lung" and that sort of notion. There's also in the Bible this notion that you can't be wealthy on Earth. That like wealthy people don't get to go to heaven because they had a good time here, right. so they don't get to have a good time. And next. yet, so uh, many churches in my uh, personal personal experience are about health and wealth. Like, come to this church. Like yeah. even, even pre, uh, what's his name, Joel Olstein, like that version of Christ, that ver- that washed out version of Christianity, that like sun drenched version. Even before that, so many churches in the '90s were like, you come to our church and you stay inside our very specific community of Christian businesses, and we all support each other and right. make a lot of money for each other. Yeah, and we have really big houses, like not even like upper class, but like middle class and upper middle class, and you become wealthy in the Lord because the Lord wants the most for you. Which is, which absolutely, I, I think the world that Christ wants the most for you. But so many Christians convert that to the idea of that means you have to be rich. Yeah. But then at the same time, like rich you know a rich man can't inherit the kingdom of god but they're like oh but they don't mean me because yeah. i give to the church and stuff and it's right. like but you you also like consider god's favor with you to be your wealth and your health and look at the fact that some of the richest institutions in the world are religious institutions mm-hmm. you've got you know the nfl <laughs> You've got, I was going to say you have like the Catholic Church and like the Church of Latter-day Saints and those kinds of churches, Scientology. Right. (laughs) Moving on, because I've decided I'm done with that blog. (laughs) Um, I'm skipping over the other blogs I have here. I always forget to do so, but patrons, I will definitely upload my notes from from the, my deep dive this t- week because I definitely have so many and I'm not going to get to all of them like there's a nail polish that happens to be called be my escape there is a quote unquote play suit which is like lingerie called be my escape so I will have those links uh, readily available for you so I'm going to skip forward to my favorite part which is fan fiction we're so far into this episode, and I still have clips. And I know, just, I know. Fan I, fiction, we're going to be here so for much. Half an hour. So there's an Invader Zim fan fiction. There's a Heroes fan fiction. There's Five Seconds of Summer, Fairy Tale, T-A-I-L, which is like a, an anime or a manga or something. Uh, there was one on Wattpad that didn't have the, the characters, so I had no <laughs> idea who that was. Uh, <laughs> Anything could happen inside that page. It's like a creepy pasta. <laughs> You don't know what's going to happen in there. <laughs> and then one that's like my interests adjacent, which is like a Merlin fanfic. 
Because who doesn't love them some Katie McGrath? And then I don't actually know if this is a fan fiction thing or an, or an original intellectual property, but on tapas.io, under comics, there's like a whole comic series called Be My Escape by Momo. It's all it's a comic? Oh, it's like a full comic? Yeah. That they drew and posted online? And okay. there's 45 episodes okay. of them. I'm good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't need to read someone's... I mean, I, I've read lots of web comics in my life, but I don't need to read a whole web comic on our podcast. But that's still cool that they put their time and everything into that. And then finally, to show off your love of Reliant K at your next rave, CandyPatterns.com has a Be My Escape uh, bracelet, candy bracelet. Oh, nice. It's not actually candy, though, right? It's just, is that what you call it? That's what it's called. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that, but okay, that's cool. Kind of club kid are you, Dan, or rave kid or whatever? I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, not one at all. I only know because I have a friend who was into it. And so like she would be like, hey, check out my new candy. And I would be like, that is a bracelet. So gotcha. Take it away, Dan. Oh, I don't feel like it anymore. <laughs> I'm ready to escape this episode. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, well, you already played the Andrew McMahon and the Leno clip. So. Oh, wait, we, wait, we, before you go, we have to take a break. An hour and a half into the podcast. We get to take a break anytime during your long segment. No, no <laughs> break for you. Just kidding. <laughs> we'll be right back. If you enjoy Sadie Hawkins Pod, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and interact with the show by calling our voicemail line 402-95-SADIE. You can send an email to sadiehawkinspod at gmail.com and visit our Instagram and Twitter, which are both at sadiehawkinspod. You can also visit sadiehawkinspod.com for the link to our Tee Public store for shirts, mugs, and stickers, including two brand new designs following in the history of all of Reliant K's logo parody merch, we have a Chick-fil-A parody design. And to prove to everyone that we are in fact the most punk rock podcast, we have a new Black Flag logo parody. You know, something that's original and that we could really call our own for once. We also want to thank our patrons over at patreon.com slash Sadie Hawkins pod. There's JR, Jarrett, Eric, Joel, Connor, Michael, Helen, Samantha, Roxanne, Jimmy Eat Pod, This Might Be a Podcast, Tucker, David, and Brady. You can sign up at our Patreon for bonus episodes, which include us reviewing the songs from KS for Karaoke and reading through the Complex Infrastructure book. Ooh. What? Treat yourself right in 2021 with Sadie Hawkins Pod, the door to a happy, healthy life. <laughs> so, we danced around it all last week, but... This song was performed live on TRL in the acoustic style that is found on the Apathetic EP. That's right. So, and thanks very much to John Schneck. Yeah, thank you so for much. For sending us a video of it because it's not on YouTube. I I mean, I assume I could ask him, like, can we can share this, right? Like, it can't be secret. It's public footage. But maybe it's been on YouTube and was copyright claimed and yeah, removed. That could be. Like I don't think John knew specifically that I wouldn't find this footage online. When you know he mentioned it happened, I'm like, I didn't know that. I didn't find it. So let's play a little of this. I just want to say, John Schneck kind of looks like a. He kind of looks like a character in a Guy Ritchie movie. <laughs> he kind of looks like a British, like a British heavy who you're not sure if he's a villain or a hero for most of the movie. And then maybe at the end, it turns out he's a hero. Aw. <laughs> this was like, this was like peak my crush on John Schneck time. <laughs> That's the first time you've admitted that on the podcast. I've admitted on the we podcast. talk about that all the time, but not all, not all the time, but we've talked about it enough. We talk about it in our personal lives and that I was not going to reveal that information. <laughs> So let's start from over <laughs> Let's hear the beginning of the singing again. Show me. 
Danny's being selfish with the video. He's she like- started she started poking her head up <laughs> over the table and I'm like, oh I'm not showing. I'm literally standing here staring at my phone playing the video and I didn't realize I wasn't playing it for her. So there's these two people in the in the main shot of Tyson. There's this guy with dark skin and a blue shirt and this lady in a white, like low cut shirt who are mouthing the words. To nice. The whole song. I love it. Nice, Dave Douglas is wearing a May shirt. Oh yeah, I saw that too. So it's amazing. It's them performing on TRL. I mean, like I said, I'm going to have to message Schneck again and ask, like, can we share this? Because I guess we can, but uh, maybe it's going to get blocked or something. Um, But that's so cool because I had no idea. I definitely wasn't watching TRL in 2005. (laughs) I don't even think I knew TRL was still on in 2005. Then we didn't even talk about the music video. So we got to watch the music video. Oh my gosh, that's right. (laughs) With the girl who has the same haircut, but a different hair color from the girls in all the other music videos. Right. <laughs> well, I typed, oh, B M escape. I was like, why didn't I find it? <laughs> so here we go. Uh, this one is uploaded by Goatee Records six years ago. It's the higher quality one. This is a commercial. I was going to say, man, this starts differently than I remember. So, I mean, it's cool because it's, like, one of the better looking... Honestly, it's... it's a, even it has a lot of production value. It has a lot of production value. It's it's visually diverse. A lot of cuts. Like, it kind of reminds me, in a way, of so many, like, people playing in a room videos. Like, Doing Time by MXPX is the first to come to mind. That's in black and white. But that video gets a little monotonous because it's not cut nearly as fast as this. And it's also in black and white. Maybe if it was cut a little faster, it's only like four or five camera angles and doing time, or at least it feels like there are. I love that we're in this bedroom. Is this supposed to be Tyson's bedroom with the like model airplanes hanging from the ceiling? Yeah, right. <laughs> There's another later MXPX video I'm reminded of. Uh, I can't remember what song right now. It's, it's a less popular song where they like all wake up and they're pretending to rock out like they just woke up from bed, but they're not actually playing, in- playing instruments. Speaking of Star Wars... The walls are closing in. Oh, uh, I was like, huh? So then the walls, yeah, the walls start moving in. That always reminds me of Time Bandits, how they like mm. push the wall through and yeah. Clearly oh. it reminds me of Star Wars. <laughs> oh, right. And one of the things is that this video doesn't cut to Dave singing. He's oh. just playing drums in the background. There isn't like a like a like a fake mic or anything there for him. Now they show pictures of a girl in photographs, but they don't show the girl. So who's he? So in the context of the video, in which they're you know muddling the religious tones of the song as much as possible to make it as secular as possible. Is the implication of the story of the video that he's broken up with this girl and she's not around? Because the, the pictures start falling and the room starts squeezing in on him and she's not around in the video, right? Like, I don't remember. Yeah, I always was confused by this video and I was I always thought the same thing. I was I thought they had, like, broken up and, and we're making it into some sort of, like, an odd torch song, I guess. Like, right. He's, like, in the context of this video, it's less that he's depressed and looking for his girlfriend to lighten his life and and help be her his escape in the context of this video what i'm getting right now is it's like he's sad because she broke up with him (laughs) right (laughs) and he's begging her to come back and be his escape and then there's the cool stuff that's kind of based on the album cover which is like it feels like the biggest budget reliant case ever which 
I know we talked about it with Must Have Done Something Right, where that video has to have had a massive budget. Oh, yeah. With all those, even though it doesn't necessarily look like it, but with all those stunt people. Permits. And all the permits for all those locations, MacArthur Park and like the library, downtown library and all that stuff in L.A., that had to be a very expensive video, even though this has actual special effects. I wouldn't be shocked to learn that Must Have Done Something Right was a bigger budget. Oh, for sure. Even though there's more, it appears there's more it's kind of It's kind of trippy. I like it. <laughs> They're in the plane in the grass. You've got the sunflowers around them and the, the murky sky. And it's cool that like there's so many rock bands where they have like, they pick a certain imagery to not only be the cover for the album, but to they pick that imagery to specifically accompany all of the art that surrounds the release of that album yeah but so many of my favorite bands don't really get that chance because they don't have like big budgets with a lot of promotion and a lot of music videos and they don't have like you know big uh complicated tours with a lot of special effects on the stage but in this case it's like one of the few times where like the cover art is symbiotic with the music video that ties into it whereas like you know, if Reliant K had been a bigger band, they would have had a whole bunch of sunflower and fields and buzzy bees all over the promotional stuff. Instead, right. you just get a couple of cover, a couple of album and single covers, and this music video. Although it is really, it, it is an it is imagery that resonates with fans because I would yeah. I the most Reliant K tattoos I've seen are of the sunflower. It's of the the album cover of this. Right. Okay, so what else? <laughs> we finally got the music video. And then there's making of the music video. Um, there is on YouTube, there's two parts to the making of the oh, music wow. video. Oh, wow. Um, the first part is for the bedroom, and the second part is for the field set. Nice. I'm just going to, we're just going to watch the f- field set section right now because, to be honest, like. I actually can't wait to check these out later. I didn't know these were out there. Yeah. Well, this is another thing that, like, only part one is on YouTube. And and I thought like, oh, I guess they didn't say part one, though. It just said on YouTube, it says be my, unless it's hidden like with a weird title and I didn't find it. If it just says Reliant K making of and it didn't say be my escape. I don't know. But when I watched the YouTube video, it just was in the bedroom and it cuts before they get to the field. And I'm like, oh, that stinks. Did they want to keep that a secret? (laughs) Did they want to keep? But then when Schneck sent me some clips, this was one of the clips he sent me was part two. What's up? This is Matt from Reliant K, and uh, you're watching the making of a video for Be My Escape, which uh, I hear will be best viewed on Laserdisc. So go buy yourself a Laserdisc player. So it is like, wow, it, it is really oh, wow. like... wow. That's awesome. It really it's, is it's like a, a high... Yeah. It's a mix of Basically practical and VFX. Yeah, everything under their feet pretty much was real. And it's not just that it's a green field, but there's also like a mossy riser. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like yeah. flat to the ground. They're like, they're up off the floor of the set a little bit on the grass. And then in front of that section of the stage is like dirt and moss. That like building up to the where the top of the set starts, and then behind them is a blue screen. Warren's making bubbles in his coffee culotta. Open field shot. Schneck is talking now. We're gonna put stuff like hoverboards and flying cars. (laughs) 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 They put him talking on the blue screen behind them. (laughs) That was so meta. It was. It was great. We know the song. We've been on the set for 14 hours now. <laughs> almost done. This last like 10 minutes has been awesome. Dave talking. Eating cookies. Eating cookies. You know, is this our first video shoot? No, this is our fourth, I think. But this is our first good one. <laughs> this is our first good one. <laughs> yeah, there's like a jib and all this like crazy stuff. Is Tyson saying that this is like more um, more high tech than Marilyn Manson ate my girlfriend? <laughs> that was a pretty big music video. It was. They ended up inside Marilyn Manson's stomach. <laughs> and uh, 
I mean, this one doesn't have fanny packs. How do they make those fanny packs disappear and press it on? That's a special effect. What's the deal? So that's uh, the making of part two. Nice. I'm just watching. It's just more footage of them. <laughs> Schneck wasn't really trying there. He was like, strum, strum. Yeah, that's about it. It just goes back to that. So That's great. Yep. Um, and yeah, go check out part one. But it's in the bedroom and it's exact. If you know anything about how stuff is right. done, you pretty much understand <laughs> how they shot the bedroom scene. Um, so this is on the live 2009 album and it's very similar to to Who I Am Hates Who I've Been. Tyson's voice was very breathy that night. So uh, that's that right. Again. That's right. I forgot. We haven't even gotten to all the different versions mm-hmm. of the song yet. There's so many live versions we can <laughs> hear. So next we're going to hear, and this is the last time we specifically come to it. It's your 2006 Hard Rock Live show. Mm-hmm. 2005. Jessica gave me, she held up five fingers. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, okay. That's that's a really cool sound. That sustain on the piano, boom. Yeah, it is. I like that. Um, I don't think I heard that's. I don't think I've heard that in any other uh, specifically recorded live version. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. Every time I see that no effect sticker, I <laughs> think it says MXPX. <laughs> um, well, each band wants a girl that buys them Coke, but each band wants a different kind of Coke. Sure. Uh, <laughs> let's hear if they, they must do the outro. Oh, wait, there's a little breakdown section there. Oh, while you hold the key and I've been dying to get out It might be the death of me And even though there's no way of knowing where to go All right, sing it! Were you, was your voice in there? Do you remember yeah, this? Yeah, was. Do you remember this moment? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't remember this moment specifically, but I do remember singing at the top <laughs> of my lungs at this show. <laughs> uh, the, the outro actually doesn't seem to be here. So they did like the radio version? Yeah, they did the radio edit. <laughs> The most emo y kid from Emo Town, USA 2005, is at the end of this video already. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's even worth describing. Just go to the Hard Rock Live Be My Escape video and Just watch the last 10 seconds. in your head, imagine a parody of the most emo 2005 kid you can imagine. And that's it. I'll, the only thing I'll say is it's like light, lightish dark hair. Like the dark dark hair, but with the highlights. That's the, Why is that helpful? I don't know, because emo hair color comes in lots of different things. And if sure. you kind of start off with like... Darkish hair with 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 blonde highlights. Who are you, Mark Nicholas, author of, or I'm sorry, co-author of complex infrastructure known as the female minds? You're so specific about the hair, Dan. We've also got, I guess, the last. There's a couple other live versions, but there's a Tyson playing it solo in 2010. Uh, I think it was actually a solo show, specifically, not just like a moment where the band got off stage. Um, there's Cornerstone 2006, but I'll also play this Apple Store San Francisco, which was a, oh, a yeah. show in promotion of Five Score. Mm-hmm. 
2007. I said 2006. I keep getting the years wrong. Also, if you want some mandolin tabs for this, there's a ton of mandolin <laughs> tabs out there for the acoustic version of this song. Oh, that's right. And I uh, and and it is Schneck playing mandolin on the apathetic version. Okay, cool. I realized I was always like I I and I pondered this when we talked to Punko's Pod, but I was like, I wonder if Warren and Schneck were on the apathetic EP, and then right. Because their pictures are on it, but I'm like, yeah, but is that just promotion? You know what I mean? Like, if that's the lineup of the band by the time the EP comes out, it doesn't matter if they're actually on the album. And I think we've looked at it, and I don't know, it's been a long time. We could have gotten looked now, but I didn't. I don't think there's, like, clear, concise credits for that whole EP. But I emailed, uh, DM'd Schneck, and he said he does definitely play on the acoustic Be My Escape. And he's doing the mandolin at the beginning, and he does it live in all these videos as well. I didn't notice that slidey country guitar. Yeah. When I actually picked this video. It's really pretty. I'm glad we played it. Yeah. I'm not even sure who's playing that because it's Tyson on the piano, Schneck on this mandolin. If it's a mandolin, I can't tell someone's face is in front of it, but it's definitely like a mandolin or smaller type of guitar. Uh, Hoops on an acoustic guitar, worn on the bass, and I'm not sure where this slidey sounding instrument is, is if there's another musician off the stage or what. Hmm. Well... We'll never know. <laughs> There's also an mm-hmm 10 lyric video like there was for I So Hate Consequences where it cuts to the crowd audio from, you know, it's a live performance, right, yeah. but with the studio track over it, lyric video, uh, lyrics on top, but then at the end it cuts to the real crowd audio from the footage. Not as, didn't hit me the same way it did for I So Hate Consequences. Like when I saw that 10 year lyric video for I So Hate Consequences and it cuts the live audio, it like got me right here. Maybe I saw it coming or whatever, or maybe <laughs> something about this song. Like it, it didn't hit me the same way. So then uh, we're going to do a Patreon episode about all of the songs. I'm dropping this on Jessica. I wanted to save letting you know this. I was like, uh, what? (laughs) All of the songs called Be My Escape that are not by Reliant K. Oh, yeah. That are all from the last eight years. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it must be, like we've talked about. There's a few EDM artists. Speaking of candy. Like, I was like, one from 2019 who's like, got my new single drop and Be My Escape. And I'm like, the audacity of you, sir. We've definitely, I mean, we've talked about this a lot recently. But with those, like, all the EDM artists that literally name themselves after the same name as a successful rock band, and you know they're only doing it for SEO, they're just leeching right. off of the success of another band and hoping that Spotify and Apple Music doesn't notice and just puts them in the same streaming profile. You know that's what it's what it's for. There must be some other thing where artists who, who want to have their own proper name, like, aren't going to go that route they must have some sort of analytic tool that finds songs that are popular and get searched a lot but not like so much that they'll completely get buried in the popularity of like a big song yeah so they kind of find like somehow they find like the most popular middle songs like be my escape and then they name their song that to steal the analytics and the seo uh, we're going to do a Patreon episode where we go through all of the different songs with the exact same title that are all recent, and it's ridiculous. But in, for now, you remember the two British boys, Panda Scene 12, who covered Hello, Who I Am, Hates Who I've Been? Oh, yeah. They're back. 
In their uniforms. In their school with uniforms. With their swoopy hair. With their swoop emo hair. Performing in the in the computer lab or whatever. Yeah. We'll go forward a little bit here. So, last time we saw these guys, the it was the other guy singing, and he did an amazing job of, like, masking his British accent just a little bit and covering it with, like, a California post-Blink uh, self-titled right. emo voice. Yeah. But the other British kid is singing here, and he's not hiding his British accent. <laughs> so it's turning this into, like, some sort of, like, bar song. <laughs> Like some sort of a song you'd hear at the pub. Like everyone's going to gather around. I mean, that's pretty good, but I just had to, I just wanted to see them again. Uh, there's a lot, obviously there's a ton of stuff. Lots of acoustic covers and uh, um, ukulele covers. Um, but let's see if we can find some interesting stuff. So yeah, I do want to play my rave DJ again. <laughs> So this is called Too Sexy for My Escape. It's uploaded to the Sadie Hawkins Pod YouTube page, and it's a mashup. It's an AI-generated mashup of Right Said Fred's I'm Too Sexy with Be My Escape. I take it back because I had said in our Lana Del Rey Patreon episode, (laughs) and I think it made it into the, um, because you opened with it, it made it into the the preview that... The Five Iron Frenzy Lana mashup Was my favorite thing you've ever made? No, this is. (laughs) This is just, it came out so perfectly, especially when there's no control. A computer made it. Yeah. I love because it sounds like someone actually, it sounds like actual human thought went into it because so many o- other rave DJ things. <laughs> right. It's just like random moments and crap that just threw together, the AI threw together and it doesn't come out. But this actually sounds like people, someone actually deliberately clipped out very specific sections to match together. This is the best EDM version of Be My Escape. <laughs> it's not nearly as good. Uh oh. As. <laughs> it's a perfect segue. The Christian workout mix version. Whoa! (laughs) This came up with something else, and I don't remember what song. It was definitely over a year ago. But there is this Coverbot Christian workout EDM compilation. And I posted it for whatever song the last time a Reliant K song was covered by this Coverbot company. And someone in our comments said like i hate you for posting this but it wasn't one of like our friends of the pod right, it was some gotcha. random person who found it and hated it and like was angry at us like i don't know if they thought we made it but here is i vaguely remember this now so this is called so it's uploaded by cwh which i guess is like the cover bot quote unquote artist um, it's 100 Christian All the Best Workout. <laughs> That's what the album's called. Nice. <laughs> it really is. like I'm 100 looking... <laughs> Christian All the Best Workout. I'm looking at the album art right now. I Amazing. think this was also made by an AI, but this isn't nearly as good as the Rave <laughs> And DJ. it's in front of like this like sort of like, it, it looks like the WoW Worship CD background. Yeah, it looks like With the that wa- like laser thing going. Yeah, It looks like someone in a Photoshop class was asked to like emulate the WoW Worship covers. Yes. And they got an A because it looked good enough, but it's not good enough to put on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh i can feel my heart rate getting up there <laughs> well Blood's it is pumping. 124 bpm let's skip ahead a little oh wow that might be the me and even though 
That might be the dead of me. Wow. Knowing where to go from this, I'm going because Gotta get out of here I'm stuck inside this rut that I fell into by mistake Gotta get out of here And I'm begging you, I'm begging you, I'm begging you to be my escape I'm giving up, knowing this alone now Boom, boom, boom. I want to do a rave DJ of this version <laughs> with boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. So this is, yeah, wow. You know, we get a lot of of covers or we see a lot of covers that are made in, in countries where English is not their first language and they do so, so good. Not so much with this one. <laughs> Uh, let's get to some proper instruments. And this is Bo Ailman, who does an unpacking video of his 1981 pedal and oh, then nice. starts playing it uh, with the song Be My Escape. So Bo Ailman, this is called 1981 Inventions DVR slash Be My Escape. So he's still opening the package, showing, you know, the unboxing. And then he's going to go test it out on a performance of Be My Escape. very cool hello Bo Ailman <laughs> um oh yeah oh you like because he's hairy yeah, I mean hairy in a good way you know whatever you call it like like sometimes you like about me when I don't cut my hair or my beard <laughs> um I don't remember what happens in this but it's called it's by an artist called Snickerous and it's uploaded to SoundCloud and my note was just wild electronic cover so let's find out what this is about <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. I'm shocked that April doesn't think so. I was waiting to say the exact <laughs> same thing. I was... knock, 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 knock. Someone's, someone's at the door all the while they hold the key. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt the song, but I was so I was waiting to say it. I'm gonna. This is uh, three minutes. So I'm gonna skip into an hour fifteen, an hour fifteen, a minute fifteen. <laughs> I mean, I that just want to keep listening to that. It was so it. good. <laughs> it was so hard to break away from that. Uh, I don't know if I need to play There's this. There's such a nostalgic feel to that, because I feel like I'm just like a kid playing video games, <laughs> and it's Reliant K. Yeah, I mean, it did it did have an odd nostalgic feel. I totally get what you're saying. There's off the record, the cover bot karaoke company has a version as well. I think we can all kind of hear that in our heads already. Vitamin String Quartet finally is back on the podcast they're barely ever on the podcast so let's actually hear from them now nice. they didn't do who i am for some reason but they did be my hmm. escape because like i've been saying contrary to the numbers be my escape was totally the bigger song it was totally yeah. i like i don't understand the numbers and how who i am was a bigger chart topper but if more people bought it that doesn't mean more people kept with it and enjoyed it longer. It seems like pe- more people enjoyed Be My Escape longer. It made a bigger impact on the culture. 
I don't know. Let's hear if vitamin string quartet can elucidate, elucidate, <laughs> elucidate. <laughs> Every time I hear a vitamin string quartet, the only thing I can think about is the scene in The Wedding Singer at the beginning where Robbie and Linda are supposed to be getting married and then it doesn't happen because they're playing, I think it's Journey, they're playing, like, there's a string quartet playing a a Journey cover. Wait. Ooh. (laughs) Sorry, I spoil what's next. But this is by Chiptune Planet and this is the Chiptune cover. By the way, we're building up towards something that I don't know if you remember, I promised for this week. Oh. I don't know if you remember what I said, but it's what we're ending on. So, but before we get to that, here's the Chiptune cover by Chiptune Planet. <laughs> All right, let's go forward a little bit. <laughs> Ooh. You just got to the special level. <laughs> do the outro and i missed it oh well go check out chip june planet we got to keep going ahead let's see a ragtime style piano cover i don't remember if this is actually ragtimey this is their little intro oh i was gonna say (laughs) um (laughs) Hmm, this is more churchy piano yeah you get a little there yeah it's the intro you know what i don't i must because I barely remember saving this, so it must have been I heard the first few seconds and was like, ah, ragtime, and moved on. Yeah, it's it's it keeps... real, it's more of just a church piano feel because yeah. I mean, listen, there's a lot of Scott Joplin records on the shelf over there, <laughs> so I listen to ragtime pretty frequently, and this right. is a little uh. So this is by Livy Day, L-I-V-I-D-A-E. It's nice. It sounds uh, good. Although that's the YouTube channel's name, but it says cover by Nate C. You know, if they really wanted to put like more of a flair in into it, they would have done that. Like, you know, after they finish some like the chorus or whatever, they would have done like a... And they needed to speed it up a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> pick your poison. Which which of these acapella bands do you want? Do you want the Brick City Singers? Do you want the mi- uh, Minor Variation? Do you want Full Measure? Do you want Testimony A? Do you want the Darth Mi- Dartmouth X Audio? Do you want No Comment Acapella? Uh, that's it. <laughs> We're not. We don't have to play an acapella. I just wanted to ma- mention the names of all those bands. I was gonna ask if none of the above was a choice. So instead, we have the dueling lullaby versions. I That's know you right, found yeah. Jammy Jams yeah. uh, in your Google Deep Dive. I love that album name. Or that is it the album or the band that's Jammy Jams? Because I love that. Uh, I, it's the, uh, it looks like, yeah, it's the band. It's called Jammy Jams because the album is called Once Upon a Rock. <laughs> nice. Once Upon This Rock. Is Jesus the rock? Well, obviously. I don't think anyone can debate that. So I more meant what other songs are on this album. Is uh, it all Christian artists or was that like a rockabye? Oh, gotcha. Okay. It's also got Alive by P.O.D. <laughs> uh, not really Christian, but How to Save a Life by The Fray. I mean, that's definitely sure. a secular song that yeah. churches will play. Uh, Locked in a Cage by Skillet, Meant to Live by Switchfoot, Honestly by Striper, all right. Nice. Fully Alive Danny, by Flyleaf. Danny, play honestly. I will. Caught Inside by the OC Supertones, <laughs> Flood by Jars of Clay, and Fireflies by All City. So 
I mean, I don't know. I've never heard that the Frey are Christian, but I've never assumed that they are. But maybe they are, or maybe they aren't. I'm self-vamping while I <laughs> type in Striper <laughs> Jammy Jams. So here's Honestly from uh, Jammy Jams. Oh, but this is also... They must have they cross-promoted albums. This is also found on their compilation little headbangers hair metal goes lullaby adorable this is stupendous i love it so much (laughs) i don't know how many striper listeners we have out there but i would unironically listen to striper they were the only hair metal band i actually really liked it's so funny because I'm not just saying this because I was like into Christian alternative rock and stuff, but there was a period where I wanted to get into hair metal and I just literally didn't like the songs that were written by any bands about Striper. Jessica's liked more hair metal than me, but like I would listen to Motley Crue and I can't even think of any other hair metal bands right now, but honestly, (laughs) but honestly, I believed that Striper like had just the best melodies and strong structure song structure for the genre in my personal opinion i'm not an expert on hair metal i'm just saying i listen to other hair metal bands and despite the fact that they're christian striper wrote amazing songs i love 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 hair metal so when danny brought striper to me i was just like (laughs) oh my gosh this is amazing (laughs) also i forgot that i introduced them to you honestly we almost picked as our first dance song but i thought it was too dramatic (laughs) i was like because it like you know it really builds and it's like whatever and i'm like oh this is way too like epic i can't we can't like (laughs) we should have had the jammy jams version yeah It would have chilled it out a little bit. <laughs> oh, you know, there's one more story. There's another story of, t- of me talking to Reliant K back in the day that I've never actually told. But when I got obsessed with Striper, it was like 2002 or some or around 2002, 2003. And when I went to Soul Fest one year, I was just like, ironically, to me, it wasn't ironic because I really loved them unironically. But I would talk to every band I talked to about Striper being ironic knowing like some bands would want to talk about striper and some wouldn't it would be a joke and sometimes i get an on an honest conversation out of it when i mentioned striper to matt Thiessen that year i remember oh by the way i also mentioned him to like calibretto 13 and like that guy went on to do harley poe which is the most like not christian band ever right so i know you don't know them but i'm just saying like it was funny he was he was just like he had like jokes about like their junk and stuff because they were a hair metal band and i'm like you know, this makes sense because he definitely didn't want to be stuck in the Christian thing anymore. Um, when I mentioned Striper to Matt Thiessen, I was like, what do you think of Striper? He was like, oh, I just got a call recently from Michael Sweet and he wants to write, he wants me to come over and meet him and write some songs together. And I was like, are you serious? Amazing. And as far as I know, nothing ever came of that. I don't know of any existing songs that were written by Michael Sweet and Matt Thiessen, but... That was cool to hear at the time. Yeah. We might have talked about this really early on in the podcast, possibly, oh, okay. because I have, I have, a, I think I brought it up. I have a striper patch that was Danny's on the back of my jean jacket. And my chiropractor was like, oh, wow, striper. Like, I haven't thought about them in years. Like, he's like, they used to sell records at, you know, this the LA church he goes to and stuff. Sorry, we played a Verbo commercial over the end of that story. But here's the other. Uh, lullaby version and it's by Sparrow Sleeps which only you know just came out seven months ago this is my the other one lull, Jammy Jams was more like uh, percussion instruments it's like xylophone and this, and, kind yeah, of feel to or it or glockenspiel or whatever or, yeah. but this is more uh, strings oh but there's some glockenspiel or xylophone in here as well that's the like, you know, stereotypical baby instrument. Right. Because dumb babies can figure out how to play it themselves too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so last full cover, and then we'll end on the thing I want to end on. Uh, here's P1K is back, and this is his cover of Be My Escape. Friend of the pod, PK1 who like reached out to us a couple months ago and was like, Hey, you like Ryan K check on my covers. I'm like, dude, we've talked about you on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) 
body makes life not fair And I've been housing all this doubt And insecurity And I've been locked inside the house Oh, why you hold me key And I've been trying to get out Then I feel the death of me And even though there's no way of knowing Where to go, I promise I'm going Because I gotta get out of here Cause I'm afraid that this can be is something I can't shake, oh yeah I gotta get out of here And I'm begging you, I'm begging you, I'm begging you to be my escape So it sounds cool, makes it hit a little harder Like I always want like more aggressive covers of this is not exactly there but i always want more aggressive covers of reliant k songs and this is almost there but not quite but it still sounds cool um so finally we'll end on the thing that i am just in i don't think we're going to really do fan videos this week because there's nothing like huge no not surprisingly not that not any real literal fmvs there's a couple full fmvs but you know a couple people two people did uh, tributes to their horses, you know? Oh, wow. Like footage of their horse sure. that they love set to be my they escape. They can literally be your escape. Yeah. Plenty of Maple Story and AMVs like usual. Uh, a tribute to the movie Paranoid Park. Uh, a Cars AMV. Uh, some Twilight AMVs. Like tons of any kind of, a lot of shipping romance stuff, but all the usual boring ships that we've heard of. Nothing like no mind bending crack ships or anything. Um, oh, a shipping video, except for the shipping video to the Book of Mormon stage play. Whoa. Like someone that wants... Uh, butter- the main guy in the book the to ma- be together? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. But the two uh, Book of Mormon missionaries in the, in the play, Book of Mormon, sorry, the play, you know, the, gotcha, the yeah. play written by the Avenue Q and South Park guys. It's the Avenue, it's the Avenue Q guy and the two guys from oh, South Park. Oh, I didn't realize that. Wrote, <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they wanted, because basically Matt Stone and Trey Parker wanted to do a Broadway play, but they had never done it, and they were friends right. with the Avenue Q person. Gotcha. So that's how they came together and wrote Book of Mormon. Avenue Q is wonderful. Yeah. Needs Jessica- to be, I think at this point it needs to be updated a little bit, but... <laughs> right. <laughs> Lots of old references. Um, but yeah, Jessica saw it on Broadway, which I can't imagine it must have been amazing. It was so We good. saw it in like a black box theater with like clearly like store bought puppets. Oh, if no one knows, Avenue Q is like a Sesame Street like world. And it's not a dirty, dirty play, but it's like they act like it's like it's adults. It's grown up it, Sesame it's, Street. It's, yeah, it's grown up Sesame Street, but it's not like pornographic. Like, right. It's, it's an R rated movie. And if you did it without well, puppets. Well, actually, there's there's some. No, there's sex stuff in it. I'm just saying it's no worse than an R-rated movie. Yeah. It's like sometimes you see like irreverent cartoons. It's it's R-rated Sesame Street. So that's the craziest shipping video is the two main characters of Book of Mormon. But instead, we will finally end off. I have to scroll back up to find it. Past all the acapellas, past the lullabies, over the piano covers... (laughs) <laughs> open my mouth close my eyes you're gonna give me a big surprise this is jordan stefan with their be my escape parody played on ukulele with these two dudes this guy with the oh, so, wow. sort of like full set not actually emo hair just like a full 70s style big bushy you know combed perfectly hair I think with a fake mustache on, he's wearing... That is 100% a fake mustache yeah, because, because he has blonde hair and it's a black mustache. Yeah, and he's wearing a janitor's blue... The, I'm telling you, this is what it's about. I know because I watched it. He's wearing a janitor's blue sort of shirt with a name tag on it says Steve. He's playing the ukulele. The main vocalist is this guy that looks like our friend Johnny. Uh, <laughs> looks like the angry video game nerd for people who don't know our friend Johnny. Wearing a green shirt and a tie, wearing glasses, looking very upset... And I told you about this last week. This is the parody that's about going to the bathroom. I told, I warned you about it last week. I've given up, I've given up slowly. Major calls, where's the bathroom? Please show me. I should have gone before I went on this date. One urinal caught my attention Between two men and that's weird that I mention I think that stall right there is looking great (laughs) 
No, I'm not inside this stall. Because so for a second they paused and he mimed sort of being locked inside a stall, like grabbing it, trying to shake it open, trying to kick it. He's not wearing shoes as they filmed this video because it shows him lifting his foot up towards the camera. Great. <laughs> I ha I, He's I, wearing I, suit pants and everything, but no dress socks or shoes. <laughs> yeah, they're dressed in character. Because eventually the guy playing ukulele is another character in the song. I and figured he's the as janitor much. who comes to try to save him. Yeah. So sorry if I misled in saying it's about going to the bathroom. There's no actual poop or pee in the song. Gotcha. But it is about being in a bathroom. Right. And getting stuck there and smoking in the boys' room or whatever. I believe this is in a college dorm because this is either, looking at what's behind them, this is either a college dorm and this is like their uh, study, the wall where their study is, or it's, it's a some, laundry room. Or it's the laundry room, <laughs> or it's like the storage closet at a church. Like, yeah. I can't decide which it is. No, I'm locked inside this stall because of insecurities And I'm trapped between these walls All I wanted was to pee and there's a man but I can't call That'd be too embarrassing But time is short now and I know it Gotta get back or she'll be going So I cry, I gotta get out of here It's already, okay, already a plot hole He's like, I could call out to the people on the other side of the bathroom stall, but I can't because that'd be embarrassing. And then two seconds later, he's like, so I cry out, I gotta get out of here. Like, well, which one is it? You're too embarrassed to cry out or you aren't? I am locked inside this bathroom and there is a lot at stake. I gotta get out of here. So I'm begging you, whoever's you, I'm begging you, dude, help me escape. It's, it's a giant plot hole. It is. He said, I can't ask for help. And then he immediately asks for help. I don't know if I'm really tired or just going soft, but this is kind of cute. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Oh, good for you. There you see, this gap's too low to even crawl. He doesn't know I have a key. And even though I know you're useless, after all, I don't know what love is. Come on, bro! Uh... I skipped ahead a little bit, but eventually the janitor comes in and he's like, got the key, but the guy is being too like frantic right. and not listening to him. And the janitor's like, I got the key. He just won't shut up for a second to let me tell him. I gotta get out of here. What kind of stall requires a key? That is an excellent question. That's not, I didn't think of that before. That's not how a stall gets locked. Maybe at no. like a big gas station, like a Bucky's or something. Yeah. They have, because those are but like. But who's going on a date to Bucky's? Yeah. I mean, somebody maybe. I don't <laughs> Someone know. Someone must be. <laughs> but yeah, like, but yeah, there are definitely public bathrooms where the stall is actually a little booth. Yeah. I've seen more than there are some. Maybe he's at but a very restaurants. fancy restaurant. Some restaurants do, at least yeah. in women's rooms. I don't know how men's restrooms work. I always just assume I mean, they're way just... more low, low, low grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think it's specific to anything. I think it's just a matter of what the architect who built the building made. So, uh... but even then, there's not a keyhole on those. It's just the little thing that says yeah. vacant or occupied. And if something happened, like if someone, you know, had a medical issue and, and couldn't unlock the door, I believe they'd break it down. They'd break it down. Yeah. If someone would crawl under or they'd probably use like a like a stick to reach. Yeah, because usually you can't underneath. get under on those kinds. You can go over those. So maybe yeah. it's like if they could go over, there's a little little space at the top usually. <gasps> Let's find out. <laughs> Should I comment? And now um, he's holding up a sign that says Musical Bridge. Hua. That wasn't necessary. <laughs> you are a hostage of the humanity. Now my date is surely gone. At least she stayed this long. All I'm asking is for you to do. It's not cute anymore. Yeah, it, it got it got dragged out way too long. Who would get stuck in a stall for this long? And you know what? Stall it's doors... a cute idea, even with the plot holes, but it just goes on for a little bit too long. Stall doors are also like the most easily broken thing. You see what I mean? <laughs> As we were saying about like if there was a medical yeah. issue. 
<laughs> well. Well, anyway. I feel like Brady's going to call up with some kind of correction. Like, actually, guys, they do have keyholes on some stalls. Oh, uh, and... you know, was that a Kohler commercial <laughs> bathroom stall from models A93 through 46B do have outdoor outside keys. They eventually replace that with blah, blah, blah. Well. I'm starting to feel like Brady the Corporate Overlord is like the the Mads to our Mike or Joel <laughs> and the bots. <laughs> Every episode from now on should just end with like Brady calling up and being like, well, Pookie, today I'm sending you Vinyl exactly. Countdown. <laughs> Today's experiment is called Vinyl Countdown. Uh, well, Jessica... Be oh my state. gosh, right. Do you like it more? Did we cover this last week? I don't think so. Do you like this song more the same or less than last last week or the week before? Less. You like it less now? A little bit, yeah. I like it just about the same because mm-hmm. I like this song quite a lot. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. A little bit less. Something about it. I don't know. I think diving more into the lyrics is really what does it. That's really like that's a big make or break for me when the on these is because that's the going point. for years I haven't really like dove into the lyrics and it's like if I have a misheard lyric I just sing it the misheard way and so now really diving into the lyrics and really thinking about meanings behind the songs does tend to draw me sort of more in one direction or the but other. But so many of the meanings that were leaving this podcast with specifically come from the more fundamentalist fans takes on it like even just putting a couple bible verses in to you know uh explain some of the lyrics is fine but it was some of the stuff when it got really heavy-handed in interpretations that might be pulling you away because like i said entirely possible to interpret this oh i just more meant that beginning part that totally threw me the i'm giving up (laughs) on giving up slowly part like uh, my whole life has been a lie up to this this whole last two weeks has just been a slow giving up he's not giving up slowly anymore i don't know what to do with myself (laughs) (laughs) he's giving up quickly maybe i don't really know like is he not giving up at all i'm not sure i have yeah, I think it's because I left I left this song with more questions than I came into it. And so, therefore, I like it a little bit less. Well, you know what? I'm going to tip the scales. I'm going to I'm going to I'm not going to stop the vote. And I'm going to let you know that I, in fact, like this song more than ever. Once I realized that the song was about going to the bathroom and getting <laughs> stuck inside a stall. That's when it really clicked for me. Oh, wait. I think I'm losing my mind. How long is this episode? Holy crap. Clicked. I get it. 